Hi Booktube, it's Nikki here. Welcome back to my channel. Today it is all about Booktube spin number six. Um, in case you didn't know, this is run by Rick McDonnell and I will link his announcement video down below. He started this up last year. Um, the idea being that you choose 20 books that you own, whether it be physically, ebook or audiobook, you number them one to 20. And on this Friday, Friday the 15th of April, Rick is going to go live and spin a random wheel generator. And he's gonna do two spins, and whichever numbers they land on, they are the two books which you try and read over the next couple of months. So it's just a little bit of fun um, for a way to add two more books to your TBR. So each time I do this, um, I like to choose a theme. Um, for the books that I'm choosing for the 20 and this time I thought I would go with a series theme. So I've chosen books 1 to 10 um, are books which are first in the series and books 11 to 20 are sequels in a series. So because we have 20 books to go through I am not going to say too much about each book. I'm going to briefly introduce each one and the number that they are and move on. So as I said, the first 10 are going to be the first in a series. And we're going to start off with number one, which is Corduroy Mansions by Alexander McCall Smith. Of course, he is um, famous for his number one ladies detective agency. This is a brand new series to me, and it's all about Corduroy Mansions, which is an old um, house in the trendy Pimlico area of London. And he's going to bring together a whole new cast of characters. I think we have a wine merchant, a boutique caterer, a member of parliament, and also let's not forget Freddie, the little terrier, who is a self-proclaimed vegetarian by all accounts. So I think it's witty, charming, and looking forward to starting a new series. So number two is Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Now, um, beginning of the year, I did an unhaul video where I tried a chapter and I tried a chapter of this one and thought I would hold on to it. So I'm really excited to start this series. I also recently saw Sandy from the channel Miss Reads A Lot. She read this one and she really liked it as well. It's YA fantasy, which we all know is not usually my jam, but it sounds really good. We've got the reds who are like the commoners and we've got the, the silver who, silvers who are the elite. And we are following a 17 year old girl called Mare and she gets herself involved in this power game and she discovers she actually has her own special power. So that sounds really, really intriguing. Now, number three is Blue Dahlia by Nora Roberts. This is the first of the Garden trilogy. I've never read a Nora Roberts and I think from what people have said, this could be brain candy and could be right in the mood for that. I think it follows three women who... Um, discover that the house they're living in is a little bit haunted and has got some secrets. There is obviously there's a garden involved, a handsome landscaper. Um, so yeah, this one sounds like it could be a really easy read. And number four is The Fifth Season by N. K. Jemison, a book which is very, very popular here on Booktube. Again, not usually my genre. This is a fantasy, dystopia, but I hear such amazing things about this one. This is the first in the Broken Earth series. And Gemma of Gemma Books would be so proud of me if I managed to get this one read because she's really championing me to, um, to read some really good fantasy. And I know that she read this one last year and loved it. So very keen to start this series. Now, number five is another book which was saved with my unhaul video earlier in the year, and that is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. Um, not gonna lie, wasn't overly drawn to this one earlier in the year. There are some very unusual photos in, in this book. This is why a paranormal fantasy, and I think it might be quite um, creepy. So I think there's some um, very curious photos discovered here, obviously involving children. There's an abandoned orphanage and I think it takes place off a um, remote island, remote mysterious island of Wales. 
Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, quite nervous about this one, but actually um, I did keep it, so it needs to be red as well. Now number six is a middle grade, and it is Tilly and the Book Wanderers from the Pages and Co series. Um, we've been wanting to read this for ages. Um, this follows Tilly, who's an 11 year old girl, and she loves books, and there's a bookshop involved, and basically she has characters from classic children's books are able to cross over from the world from, from the page into real life and they help her solve the mystery of what happened to her mother several years before. So I've heard such good things about this and would love to um, start this series. Now I know that in May, um, Katie from the channel Books and Things is running a historical fiction readathon for the whole of May. So this next one would work in really well. And so number seven is Tidelands by Philippa Gregory. This is part, the first one in the series of the Fair Mile series. So this is set in England in 1648, it begins, and involves a civil war between the king at the time and the rebellious government parliament. So, and I think it takes it to, there are two central characters and I think it takes it to the marshlands um, on the coast as well. So number eight is my favourite genre probably, and that's historical mystery. And number eight is The Mitford Murders by Jessica Fellows, and it's the number one in the Mitford Murders series. This is set in 1919, and it follows a girl called Louisa who gets a position in the Mitford household in the Oxfordshire area. She is going to act as a nurse, um, a nursery maid, a chaperone, and quite a confidant to one, if not more, of the Mitford sisters. So yeah, I really like the sound um, of that one, and again, could tie in really nicely with Katie's um, historical fiction readathon. Now, number nine is another one that could work well for that um, readathon, and that is The Seven Sisters by Lucinda Riley. This is a series I've been wanting to start for ages, The Seven Sisters series. This is historical fiction and of course some romance as well. I know um, that these books are quite chunky but from what I can gather they're really easy reads. This follows um, Maya and her five sisters who were all adopted by their father. He dies and they are all called to a chateau I think um, by Lake Geneva and he has left them all clues about what their heritage and their past is. So they are given these clues and in book one, I think we are following Maya and it's gonna take her to Brazil, which would be great because I'd love to go to a book that is set in um, Brazil. And number 10 is another historical fiction with a romance and this is Ross Poldark by Winston Graham and this is part of the Poldark Saga series. Now I have seen some of the TV series, not all of them, but I have seen some and did in, um, enjoy that one. So this is set in the 18th century and follows Ross Poldark as he comes back from the war and finds that his long lost love is actually engaged to somebody else and then someone else comes into his life and we follow them and their children and so on. So numbers 11 to 20 are sequels in a series and no surprises that there's going to be more crime and thriller on these ones. The first one, so number 11, is Big Sky by Kate Atkinson. I hauled this book last year and I love the cover, the colour of this cover. This is the D.I. Jackson Brodie series. Kate Atkinson wrote a few of these and I really enjoyed them many years ago and then she had a nine year break and then she brought Jackson Brodie back and this was the first one of that return. Um, he now finds himself in a seaside resort in England and that's all I know. I don't know much more about the crime but would really like to get back to her writing. Number 12 is Agatha Christie and it's The Murder on the Links. So of course this is part of the Hercule Poirot series. Um, Poirot and Hastings are called to a French village by their client Paul Renault. But on their arrival they find that Paul Renault has been stabbed to death and his body has been left in a newly dug um, grave right by the golf course, hence the links. So yeah, always keen to get back to a Poirot. Now, number 13 is a book that I started right at the end of March and only got a few chapters into and then DNF'd it because I wanted to get onto my April books. And that is The Singapore School of Villainy by Shamini Flint. This is the um, Inspector Singh Investigates series. 
This one is set in Singapore. He is based in Singapore, but often he goes out to different Asian countries. But this one is in Singapore and involves the death of a senior law partner in an international law firm. He is found clubbed to death slumped on his desk. So as I say, I was enjoying it in the first few chapters and would be very keen to get back to this one. Now, number 14 is The Beautiful Mystery by Louise Penny. This is number eight in the Inspector Gamache series, which I love. It's set in Quebec and um, I love Inspector Gamache and the whole cast of characters, which I've said um, many times before, set in Three Pines in Quebec. And this one is supposed to have really good reviews and is set in a monastery and the monks are involved. And the beautiful mystery, I think, is the name given to the special chant that the monks do. So yeah, really looking forward to continuing the series. Uh, now, number 15 is Rich People Problems by Kevin Kwan. This is the third in the Crazy Rich Asians trilogy and I've still not got to it. Um, I really need to get this trilogy finished. This is about the grandmother, the very, very wealthy grandmother who is about to pass away. And consequently, all of the wider family swoop in like vultures because they all want a piece of her wealth and her beautiful estate in Tysall Park. So yeah, really keen to finish off this trilogy. Number 16 needs no introduction because it is the Chronicles of Narnia and this is number four, Prince Caspian. Last year I had a plan that I was going to reread the first three and then I was going to continue properly reading from there. I did get the first three finished, reread, but I didn't get on to the others. So this would be the next one, so I'd be keen to pick this one up and um, finally finish these Chronicles of Narnia. Now, the next one would be good if I got this one because it's on my TBR vets pile. So it would be really, really handy to get this one and prompt me to finish it. And that is The Kingmaker's Daughter by Philippa Gregory. So yeah, second Philippa Gregory on this list, actually. So another historical fiction, so it would work for Katie's readathon. And this is, of course, part of the Plantagenets, the Tudor series. And this one, we are following Anne Neville who is the daughter of the very powerful kingmaker Richard Neville, the Earl of Warwick. And in this one, we learn how Anne has got to cleverly navigate the dangerous court that she finds her in, particularly with a conniving father who uses um, his daughters to his own means. So yeah, really keen to get on, to get on with this one. Now, number 18 is The Suspect by Fiona Barton. Um, this is number three in the Kate Waters series. I've read number one, number two, um, The Widow and the Child. Kate Waters is a journalist. And what happens in this one is two 18-year-old girls uh, on their gap year in Thailand and they go missing. And Kate wants to be the first one on the um, on the scene to report this case. And then I think she gets involved with something to do with her own child. So this is obviously a thriller and I really remember enjoying The Widow and the Child. So yeah, very keen to get back to um, Fiona Barton's writing. Now number 19 is another one on my TBR vets. So it'd be great to remove this thriller from my TBR shelf. And that is Die Last by Tony Parsons. And this is part of the Max Wolf series. Um, this is number four, I believe, and he is a detective. I really enjoyed the other ones in his series, which is quite a few years now since I've read them. This is all about a lorry that um, is discovered in Chinatown in London. Unfortunately, inside 12 immigrant, illegal immigrant women are found dead. They have died from hypothermia on this um, trip, but bizarrely, the passports are found and there are actually 13, not 12 passports. So where is the missing girl? So I think this is actually gonna follow quite dark themes of human smuggling and the 21st century slave market. But yeah, I really like Tony Parsons writing um, with crime and I found them quite cleverly constructed before, so I'd be keen to read that one. And number 20 is Burning Angels by Bear Grylls. This is another one on my TBR vets list, actually. This is the Will Yeager series. Not many people know that Bill Bear Grylls has written thrillers. 
This one is in typical Bear Grylls style. It's gonna involve mountains, jungle, tropical islands, glaciers, oceans, and it's going to be um, packed full of adventure. Um, I really enjoyed the first one actually that I read of this and it had quite, um, had Nazi links in it with um, with the war and yeah it was really really good so I'm be keen to get back to this. It's called Good Ratings so I will see if I enjoy Will Yeager's adventure this time. So there we go, there are my 20 books for booktube spin number six. Are you taking part? Please do link your video down below if you are because um, I would love to see your 20 choices. Or if, you're, um, if you don't have a channel, please tell me what theme you've gone for or how you've chosen your 20 books. Don't forget to tune into Rick McDonald's um, video on Friday, his live one, to see what he spins. I'm not sure quite what I'm doing this with my finger. <laughs> um, to see what the spin, what two numbers come up. And I will reveal what I got when I have my May TBR video in a couple of weeks time. So thank you very much for watching. Please comment down below on any of the books. Have you read any of these? And I will come to you again with a video very soon. Take care, bye.